good to go? Hello, I'm Liv West, and we're with the Ashland High School Teen Press. And I'm Colin Timmons, and I am also with the Ashland High School Teen Press. Um, we are here for uh, your film, Swim. Is that correct? Awesome. So uh, if you could just state your name real quick. Yeah, my name is Kristen Uno, and I'm one of the producers on Swim, which is a short narrative film premiering uh, in Oregon for the first time here at the Ashland Independent Film Festival. So if you could tell us a little bit about um, your role in the film and about the film also, like what it's about, what the, whatever you want to tell us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I've known the writer and the director since we were like in fifth grade. Uh, we've been best friends for many years. And about a year ago, uh, she came to me with a short script called Swim and she asked me what I thought about it. And I said that I thought it was a really great story. I know that it's uh, actually a personal story for Mari. Um, she actually stole her mother's swimsuit and put it on and snuck into the pool when they were on vacation and went for a secret midnight swim. And uh, I think that she wanted to show how a simple moment could be much more complicated and complex for somebody else, depending on their circumstances and just to validate the experiences of other people, um, especially people who are trans. <laughs> yeah. um, so if you could tell us a little bit more um, about, do you know when Mari, ch when she went through ch the change? And were you there for her? And could you tell us a little bit about um, what that was like for you as a friend and um, being in that position of being there for her? Um, well, I mean, there were, looking back, signs that it was something that she had probably known for a while about herself, but I, th I think it's one of those things that's kind of hard to talk about, especially during the time that Mari was growing up. Um, not sure how people will react and not quite sure what the name is for what you're going through. I think she told me a story that uh, she figured out the name for what she was experiencing, um, trans, being born into a body that doesn't fit with your identity as you know, a person, and that she found that just by looking online. It wasn't something that was in our social dialogue at the time. It wasn't a part of our conversation. Uh, it wasn't a part of film or radio or media really at the time. It's only been in recent years where a kid could watch something on TV and be like, oh, there's somebody who's trans. That's what that is, and I identify with that. So I think that's one of the driving forces for her as a filmmaker, is to tell these stories so that it becomes normal and so that kids have a mirror for themselves um, within the media that they can look at. Um, anyways, when she did go through that transition, um, I was lucky enough to be a close enough friend that she felt comfortable telling me about it. And honestly, it was just, it was a really beautiful thing. Um, I could tell that she had been unhappy for some time, and when she did tell me, it was with a lot of joy and a lot of relief, and um, I felt very honored to be a part of that. So I have a quick question about the making of the film and just like the kind of like a like the aesthetic behind it and stuff. Um, I noticed watching through it, it was kind of like a lot of the parts were a lot like very quiet and very kind of like. Um, almost just like no dialogue at all but then there was like points of just like loud noise and like a loud meaning so was that intentionally done or was it like just like something that happened on accident <laughs> I would say that's um, a signature of Mari's filmmaking she really appreciates those quieter more understated layered moments in film one of the beautiful things about the medium is that it's very visual and so a lot can be done without words and so sometimes the most jarring thing is when people speak. Um, but Swim is a film that's a lot about the internal struggle and the things that are being left unsaid. And also about those quiet moments when you're alone with yourself and you can really just be who you are. I love that a lot. Um, I was curious about the use of the book, The Awakening by, oh, who's the author? Katie Chauvin, Katie Chauvin, okay. Um, 
what was the significance of that? Like, did that have um, some sort of meaning aside from um, that was, I love that you caught on to that detail, by the way. That was definitely put in on purpose by Mari. It was a book that she read when she was going through her transition that really spoke to her um, as an individual. And uh, the actor, Gavin, actually, he was wonderful. He read the book in preparation for the part and loved it. And he and Mari really connected over that detail. Um, and then also, uh, just about the actors, um, were these people that you knew ahead of, like ahead of time that you wanted to be in these roles, or were they, like, was there an audition process that was really elaborate? And <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the first producers on the project was Catherine McEwen, and she played the role of Nikki's aunt. Uh, she had the red hair in the film, and she's just a tour de force, force of nature, just great producer, really made sure that things got done and were done the way they needed to be and on time. And uh, we thought she'd be great for the aunt. And then I think Mari also knows, knew Susan, who was the mother. But then we did casting for the father and for Nikki, the main part. Um, and we had a wonderful casting director, Valerie McCaffrey. Uh, she's done everything from you know Dark City to, uh, what else has she done, Babe. She did American History. She's also done Hard Candy. So she's really great at casting younger actors. And she gave us several great choices for the role of Nikki. But we ended up going with Gavin, um, which actually was kind of perfect because we were able to get Jen Richards for adult Nikki at the end of the film. And uh, a lot of people have said that they look quite a bit alike, very similar. And uh, that was a very happy circumstance. So. So what was like the film, like the whole, like can you elaborate a little bit on the film process and like kind of like, um, like, like kind of just like how everyone acted on set and like kind of like how everything really worked together and was pieced together? Well, we had a great crew, um, first of all, and things went very smoothly. Mari uh, is an amazing director and collaborator. She has a longtime friend cinematographer, Jordan Perot, uh, who did lovely camera work. He got us a great deal on the camera. We were able to get an Ari Alexa, which was beautiful. Um, and then we used the A7 for the underwater shots. Um, we had the amazing Catherine on set, both acting and producing. Uh, we collaborated with the production company Vanishing Angle, who were so supportive throughout the process. And one of our producers, Kelly Thulis, um, coordinated between us and them since she works for them. Uh, Susan, who played the mom, was a co-producer, so she was helping out at the beginning of production. I was on set location managing and then also, you know, working as an associate producer on the film. So I think everyone was just asking where they could help out, looking to, you know, make this project the best that it could possibly be. You know, down to our production assistants, everyone was just a joy to work with. And, you know, really just, you know, can I do anything else? Can I help you clean up some more? So it was a really beautiful, beautiful set, and I think people love to come to work and to be there. Um, I'm wondering um, if there's one thing that you wish was universally known about transgender people, just to help further awareness about just what's going on, you know? I think the best thing to know about transgender people is that they're people and have a conversation with them and talk to them and get to know them. Um, I think that's the best way to branch out and meet anyone. So I think it's the same with people who are trans. It's important to hear their stories and for their stories to be heard. So um, one of my questions is, was everything like in the film, like all the actions and all the kind of like the dialogue and stuff, was that like all true like did everything all of that happen like hiding it in the like hiding the swimsuit in the um laundry and all that jazz did like all that happen um pretty much we tweaked a few things obviously it's not completely what happened um yeah but she did try and dry the swimsuit with the with the blow dryer and i was like mari why don't you just put it in the drying machine it worked so much better and she's like i know i know i was so stupid <laughs> Um, but actually, when she was in the pool, it was um, the neighbor who almost caught her. Um, and in this film, 
a friend actually gave Mari the advice that it would be more emotionally impactful if it was the dad who almost found her because that was what who really mattered to the main character. And that was a great note that we took and we folded into the script. And obviously, you know, we tweaked other things a little bit, but you know, at its heart, this was a, a personal narrative for Mari based on her own experiences. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so everything was like a personal, personal narrative and stuff. So like, like I also noticed, like I always think that like um, music usually makes like the movie like what it is. So like, what was like kind of like I noticed that a lot of the parts of the movie were just no music and it was just kind of like you just really hear the the sounds of everything that's going on and so it's like wha why was that like a design decision? I think Mari and I both feel very strongly that sometimes music can be overused in film, that the tenseness and the emotion of a moment can be stretched and felt more if there's silence, that that can be the most powerful thing. And when the music is played in the film, it's used to really just express the release and the freedom that the character feels. So, I mean, you know, you hear it when she goes into the pool and she's swimming and it's this, oh, it's this, like, the sigh that you experience as you're watching. And then again at the end of the film, yeah, we had um, an amazing composer, uh, Bob Allaire, do the music for the film. I think Mark gave him like a week or something. She was like, hey, Bob, um, so we need some music. Can you do some music for this pool scene? And he was like, okay, but I'm like in New York and I only have my guitars, so, you know, I don't, I'll, I'll do my best. And I thought, I, I mean, I watched it and I was just blown away by what he had done. And then Mari's also great friends with the band Bora Bora, who did the music that you hear at the beginning of the film and then which cycles back at the end. And they were kind enough to let us use that music in the film which is great because I know that Mari had that particular song in mind from the very beginning. Um, you talked about in the Q&A before that um, you dabbled in writing a little bit. Yeah, I'd like to hear about that. Like, what, what have you done? <laughs> um, well, I've written some short stories and I've also written some pop culture essays that have gotten published online, like on Women Write About Comics. I wrote a piece um, I also have done some script consulting. Um, Mari and I have gone back and forth. I've given her notes on her scripts and she's given me notes on my writing. And then I'm, I'm working on a novel right now. So, you know, as, mo as with most writers, you know, you write and then you like do a bunch of other things. <laughs> and um, what would be your best, most golden piece of advice for aspiring young writers? I mean, I think that it's all about finding your voice, deciding the stories that you want to tell. When there's something that you feel like you have to tell, then, it, you know, make it happen. Um, I think one of the most difficult things for aspiring or young writers or producers is to figure out, you know, well, what, what are my hobbies and what is really my career, my passion, the thing that I'm going to die for and that, you know, I'm always going to circle back to because it's what I love. And I know that for me that took a while, you know, that I went through several different careers in terms of, you know, well, I could do this or I could do that or I could do this, but I always found myself circling back to telling stories um, because that's what I really love. And I'm lucky enough to be able to do that as both a writer and a producer. And um, so, yeah, I think just figuring out what it is that you, you really have to do. So the tone of the film is like very serious, but um, I, there had to be some like really funny moments that happened on set. So if you could like tell me a couple of the moments that happened that were like with, without being too like <laughs> too compromised, <laughs> um, like what were like kind of the funnier moments? Oh gosh, um, I don't know. It was it was pretty low key, honestly. It was pretty chill. Um, I, I'm struggling. <laughs> Um, dramatic moments. I, I can't really think of any. I mean, honestly, everybody was just having a pretty good time and it went pretty smoothly. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was great to like chat with everybody and hear their stories, but I, I can't say there are any huge goofs, thankfully. I guess, you know, fingers crossed. Save that for the next production. <laughs> I think we're good. Are any? Do you have any final thoughts that you want to kind of say or anything? Uh, 
No, and just thank you so much for having me and for coming to see the film. We really appreciate the Ashton Film Festival for having us. They've been amazing. And I, I know that everyone from SWIM wants to thank them for having the film at this year's festival. Well, thank you for letting us interview you. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And I hope you have uh, good luck on your future prospects. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good. We're good. <laughs>